other evidence. <laughs> it's worth recalling that Doubting Thomas, the patron saint of scientists, was criticised for demanding evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. The other disciples were explicitly praised for accepting an alleged fact on faith in the absence of evidence. Let me turn now to the second meaning of fundamentalism, extremism. We are accused of being extremists. We new atheists are said to be no better than the Muslim extremists who hijack planes and fly them into buildings, or than the fundamentalist Christians who blow up abortion clinics. When was the last time you read of anybody who blew up anything in the name of atheism? Not blew something up and happened to be an atheist, blew something up in the name of atheism. The 19 hijackers of 9-11 did what they did in the name of their religion. They honestly and sincerely believed they were behaving in a good and righteous fashion. They believed they were doing what their God wanted them to do. They believed that they were going to a martyr's reward. They believed it because it followed logically from what they had been taught in their faith schools. Atheism doesn't have any faith schools. If we did, by the way, we wouldn't teach them atheism, we'd teach them critical thinking and how to make up their own minds. And you can be absolutely sure that we would not teach them to employ violence and certainly not suicide attacks. There is no logical pathway leading from atheism to violence. There most certainly are logical pathways leading from religion to violence. Now, of course, not many religious individuals follow those pathways to their logical conclusion, thank goodness. But there is a logical pathway from the Quran, for example, and it only takes a minority to be lured down it. For atheists, there is no such logical pathway. The nearest we get to violence is in the words we use. And there's a big difference. It's a grave misuse of the word extremism to say that atheists are just as extreme as religious extremists. As Victor Stenger, the physicist, has pithily put it in a slogan that might look well on the side of a bus, perhaps. Science flies you to the moon. Religion flies you into buildings. Nevertheless, nevertheless, atheists such as me have been accused of using the language of extremism. We are strident, shrill, intolerant, aggressive, arrogant. We worship the mind rather than the soul, rather than the heart, rather than the gut, perhaps one might say, to parody Charles Moore. And we are accused of giving offence. Well, I think a great deal of this stems simply from the fact that religion has for so long been feather-bedded. Our whole society, the non-religious as well as religious portions of it, has bought into the fiction that it's somehow bad manners to criticise religion. Douglas Adams put it beautifully in an impromptu speech in Cambridge in 1998. Religion has certain ideas at the heart of it which we call sacred or holy or whatever. What it means is, here is an idea or a notion that you're not allowed to say anything bad about. You're just not. Why not? Because you're not. Why should it be that it's perfectly legitimate to support the Labour Party or the Conservative Party, Republicans or Democrats, this model of economics versus that, Macintosh instead of Windows? But to have an opinion about how the universe began, about who created the universe, no, that's holy. We're used to not challenging religious ideas, but it's very interesting how much of a furore Richard creates when he does it. Everybody gets absolutely frantic about it because you're not allowed to say these things. So when somebody like me says something even mildly critical of religion, it is heard as strident and aggressive, even if it's actually less so than would be perfectly acceptable if it were anything other than religion that was being criticised. There's nothing really new about the so-called new atheists. Nothing new in what we say. The only thing new about us is that we speak up and we call a spade 
a spade. This is not fundamentalism, it's just honest clarity of expression. We use our brains rather than our gut. New atheism speaks clearly. This used not to happen. Atheists were supposed to know their place, to shut up and respect automatically religious faith. I love a quotation from Johann Hari who said, I respect you too much to respect your ridiculous ideas. So entrenched is the assumption, implicitly accepted for centuries by religious and non-religious alike, that religion must automatically be respected, that even clarity is heard as offensive. As fundamentalist, indeed, I'm confident that this audience will not be swayed by such pussyfootery and will vote with their heads instead of with their guts. Vote against this motion. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and you'll be very glad to know that you're in the school which is teaching critical thinking, philosophy, and indeed thinking to every single student. You'll be less pleased to hear that we're also teaching Christianity and Buddhism and, and Hinduism, but, uh, you know, we're, we try and uh, cover all different types 